Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Now we've all seen the Model S Plaid launches from zero and even the launches from a rolling start and it's very impressive and some of you might even think that the Model S Plaid is actually powered by witchcraft or voodoo or something but it is actually powered by science. So today I'm going to dive a little bit into the uh, carbon sleeved rotor. I'm not going to do a full detailed view if you want that Please let me know in the comments, then I can still accommodate that as well. But for now, we're going to look at why these carbon sleeved rotors are actually so good. Now, there are a lot of things going on with that carbon sleeved rotor. Now, first of all, we all know that carbon is known for being lightweight and for having a high strength to weight ratio. It's about six times stronger than steel. So that means that in essence, we could choose to take the outside of the rotor and make it, make it six times thinner, or you keep it the same uh, height and then, or the same thickness, and then it will actually be a lot stronger than the steel outside. Now, another part of carbon fiber is, of course, that it is non-ferromagnetic. Um, so that means that the uh, magnetic flux from the motor can penetrate the outer shield a lot easier while it gets bent in the metal uh, partly with a steel outer rotor shell. So those are a few things that uh, we need to take into account, but also carbon fiber is lightweight. So the more lightweight the rotor is, the less moment of inertia that you have. So the faster it can spin, the less rotational weight that you have, but also the faster it can spool up and spool down. So those are a couple of things that we'll have to take a look at uh, when we talk about this motor. Now, if you look at this image here, then you can clearly see the magnets in a V-shape, which is a six bolt uh, rotor here. So you have uh, six pairs of magnets that are sitting there and you have the carbon fiber outside that you can clearly see here. But also uh, next to the magnets, there are little gaps that allow the magnetic field to go unhindered through non-metallic uh, items. So basically air in this, in this case, um, to penetrate the outer shell and to have higher interaction, better interaction, more performant interaction with the stator and the magnetic field of the stator. Now, it also reduces a little bit of the weight of the uh, rotor. And in the middle, we also see what appears to be gaps, which probably also reduce the weight of the rotor. And... Uh, have more efficiency when it comes to the famous eddy currents. Now, eddy currents are something that appear when a um, metal object is undergoing a change in magnetic field. So we all remember the high school science project where you had a magnet, you had a coil, and then you move the magnet in and out of the coil, and then you get alternating current, basically. So if the magnetic field changes, then it introduces a current in the wire, or in this case, in the rotor. And uh, that current in itself creates a magnetic field that is opposing the original magnetic field. So it's causing a little bit of drag, so to speak. Now with replacing the outside steel sheet with uh, carbon fiber, uh, you almost reduce it completely that the outer shield has some currents going through it. So there is less eddy currents, there is less uh, magnetic drag that is being created. But also, if current flows through metal, it generates heat. So there's also a lot less heat that is being generated. Now, what is also important, of course, is that carbon fiber has close to zero thermal expansion. So that means if the motor gets hot, then um, it doesn't really expand. But the copper inside it, the metal inside it, it does expand. Um, so that means that uh, it will contract when it's colder. So if you put the uh, carbon sleeve on it and you measure the carbon sleeve because that becomes really hard with the resin as well, once it's cured. So if you measure that 
to be a perfect fit when the motor is operational, then things would be fitting quite loosely uh, when the motor is cold. So what Tesla has done is they put a lot of tension on the carbon fiber when they wind it. And then um, when, when it's cold, it actually fits snugly. But when it's hot, then the tension from the inside of the motor going outside is going to be really high. So that is also where carbon fiber with its high strength capabilities is coming into play, while at the same time being a lot lighter than steel, of course. Now we see in the um, motor here that the carbon fiber is actually cured and the curing temperatures for carbon fiber are quite a bit higher than uh, the safe temperatures for magnets. So one of the uh, people on, on Twitter asked Elon like, okay, a magnet starts losing uh, its, its magnetic capabilities um, as of a certain temperature and the curing of the resin is requiring higher temperatures. So how do you combine that? And uh, Elon Musk didn't really reply to it. He said, well, we need to keep some secrets after all. The one of the things that I think that could happen is that you have a concept that is called heat fitting. So you take uh, some piece of metal, you take a ring that needs to go over it, you heat up that ring so it expands, and then you can slide over it. And when it cools down, it fits really snugly and uh, you can't really uh, pull it off anymore. Now, the reverse could be done also, uh, for example, and I'm just guessing here, but this could be one of the ways that it is working. So they create the sleeve, the carbon fiber sleeve, and then they really cool the rotor down uh, so that it contracts. And then you have a fit. And then when it expands again to room temperature, it really fits and gets uh, everything under high tension. Um, so it fits and it doesn't let go. Just a guess, but this is one of the ways that it, it is actually possible to do that. Now, the Tesla motor is also uh, what they call an IPM SYNORAM. So it's a internal permanent magnet, synchronous reluctance motor. So there are two things at play here. So first of all, the magnets that you see on, on the motor or on the rotor, they come into play at low speeds. So at low speeds, permanent magnet motors have the highest torque available. But the problem is as soon as they start turning at higher speeds, they create a back EMF in the stator. So the stator gets under tension from the rotating magnetic field. And then uh, it, it's, it's not under tension, it's, it's, uh, there's some currents being generated there, reducing in heat losses. And of course that heat needs to be cooled, so it is less efficient at higher speeds. Now motors also, like to be in a state with as low as a reluctance as possible. So that means that if um, the motor turns and you have a rotating field that is not matching the RPM of the motor, then you get high reluctance or the, the magnetic field is shifting a little bit uh, in terms of the um, least reluctant part within the rotor then it's not as efficient. So what the rotor likes to do is try to follow the magnetic field. So if the magnetic field is turning, then the rotor will turn at the same pace, basically, as the magnetic field. That is what is used for higher RPMs. So the motor in a Tesla is basically working in two different ways. So you have the permanent magnets that are doing most of the work at low speeds, uh, low RPM. And uh, when climbing a hill, for example, uh, when you need high torque, that is where the permanent magnet motor or the permanent magnet part of the motor is really good. But it is really bad when it comes to high speed cruising, when you don't need a lot of torque, but the motor needs to run efficiently. That is where the reluctance part is coming in. So they are shifting the magnetic pole timing um, from using as much as possible the magnets to getting as much as possible the lowest reluctance state of the rotor. 
and then it turns at high speed and the uh, RPM of the motor is basically geared by the uh, RPM, let's call it like that, or the rotation of the magnetic field within the stator. So the magnetic field of the stator will dictate the speed of the uh, rotor there as well. So this is how it is actually um, a dual way of uh, operating an electric motor and combining the best of both worlds. Another key component of the carbon fiber sleeve is of course the high strength and uh, the way it is very tightly wrapped and the fact that it has zero expansion or close to zero expansion uh, at higher temperatures. So that means that even when the motor runs hot or hotter or warmer, I should say, uh, because it, the difference will be quite big between the carbon sleeve or a metal sleeve. Um, because of the almost zero expansion, that means that the gap between the stator and the rotor underneath can actually be really tight. Right? It can be a lot tighter than what it would be when we have a, a thermal expanding uh, steel sleeve that needs to accommodate right, the movement of the rotor when it gets warmer and uh, doesn't hit the stator. Now getting a closer gap means that, or a smaller gap means that it uh, actually has more magnetic field going into the stator or between the stator and the rotor. Uh, and that means that it becomes a lot more efficient because the magnetic field will be a lot stronger at that point. The outside sleeve also needs to be really, really strong because as Elon mentioned, the motor or the rotor is turning uh, at top speed. It's, it's a single uh, gear, so it's a single speed motor. But at the top speed, it is turning at 20,000 RPM. So that's a lot. And that generates a lot of centripetal force and centrifugal forces. Um, so I did the calculation for the lateral g-forces uh, that would be exerted on the outside of the rotor, given the fact that um, from the image uh, at the unveil, you could see that it has about the same diameter as a Model 3 motor, which is 15 millimeters uh, for the rotor. So if you take, sorry, 15 centimeters for the, for the rotor, so if you take that diameter and then you let that spin at 20,000 RPM, then the outside of the rotor is undergoing a centrifugal force or a lateral uh, g-force that is pointing away from the center uh, at that point of over 67,000 g's. So that means that every gram of weight becomes 67 kilograms that is being flung away and is being held back by the carbon fiber uh, that is around the rotor. So it is amazing how strong that has to be and, and how strong the forces become at those speeds. And Elon said there might even be some margin. And I think for the Roadster, they, they will have to go higher or make that a two speed, maybe like uh, the Nevera, the, the Rimac Nevera. But Elon seems to be very determined to stick with one gear so that will uh, turn at higher speeds, creating higher g-forces. So I'm curious to see what the motors for the Roadster will actually look like over time. But it is really impressive at the moment what they can already do with this motor. So there you have it. A little bit of the science behind why the carbon fiber sleeved rotor is so innovative uh, and, and is so impressive. And I think it is the future of all electric motors uh, once we get the cost down of creating those because Tesla actually had to create its own machine to wind it at the correct tension. And that was created by the uh, Groman uh, German uh, engineering factory that they bought several years ago. So they're really integrating the know-how and the knowledge from every part of the company to every other part of the company. And that is something that I really like with Tesla, to have that complete integration. And they try to do everything and try to control everything from A to Z. And you can call them control freaks and it becomes a really big company doing everything uh, on the one hand. But on the other hand, that means they can really rapidly iterate on designs, iterate on hardware also, because that is 
a lot more difficult than iterating on software, especially if you're working with external companies that have to retool their production lines specifically for some changes. And those tools, they cost a lot of money as well. So it's not cheap and it's not quick to do that usually, unless you take everything internal and then you can actually uh, steer everything and map everything to everything else. So if you change something here, then automatically uh, it adapts something in another place. And that's a lot easier when you have it all under your own control, of course. But that's the way how Tesla rolls. And I really like the way that they are trying to do that and succeeding in doing that uh, for now. So yeah, I hope you found this uh, really interesting. And as always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure you click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.